In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness questions, and we also have a lot of fun. In the introductory portion of this episode, we talk about current events, news articles, scientific studies, and we mention Ooh, our science sponsors. Here's what we did in this episode. We start out by talking about supplements and pro-hormones. We go down memory lane, talk about all the times we took crazy supplements that we promised, up for you. That promised great results and probably shortened our lifespans. <laughs> then we talked about Assembly Bill 5 in California. California doing a great job destroying good businesses. Can we regulate everything? <laughs> Please. Then we talked about the fight between Donald Cerrone and... Uh, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Thank you very wow. much. That was a great fight. Yeah. Uh, he got his face busted by a shoulder, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Then I talked about the myth that war boosts the economy. Not true. We talk about TikTok and how uh, military personnel are told not to use it because maybe China's Ooh, spying on you guys. China spying. That reminded me that uh, to talk about an article that talked about the the first city in China that's quarantined to try to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Adam talked about police facial recognition technology, which is getting kind of crazy. We talked about food quality and why food quality is worth paying the price, which reminded us to talk about Magic Spoon. This is a company we just started working with. They make cereals that taste like your favorite kid's cereals when you were a kid. Yeah. But here's the difference. The macronutrients are phenomenal. These are no sugar, high protein cereals. Excellent macronutrients, and again, they taste amazing. Somehow they taste amazing. I don't know how they did. So far, our favorites are blueberry, uh, and uh, what's the other one you guys like a lot? The fruit, fruit, fruit one, fruit right? Loop one. Oh, so yeah. good. Um, uh, by the way, we have Wrong a discount brand, for yeah. you. If you go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump, uh, you'll get an automatic discount and you'll get free shipping. By the way, there's a hundred percent guarantee. If you don't like your Magic Spoon cereal, you'll get a full refund. Make sure to use the code mind pump. Then I talked about the organic farmer who got 10 years in jail because his food wasn't organic. You liar. And then we talked about the top YouTube earner of 2019. Then we got into the Ooh, fitness questions. Lots of hate there. The first question was, uh, do we recommend deload weeks? What's the deal with deload weeks? So we talk all about like how to deload, what that looks like, why you would need to do a deload week. The next question, this person wants to know what our thoughts are on mini bulks and mini cuts. So bulking is when you're eating in a way to build muscle. Cutting is when you're eating in a way to burn body fat. And now do it mini. And we're talking about doing it for shorter periods of time for better results. Uh, we explain it in that part of the episode. The next question, this person wants to know if there's any benefits to carb cycling. So explain what carb cycling in and how it is, excuse me, and how that can help you or not help you. And the final question, this person wants to know what we think about foam rolling. Does it work? And what's the science behind it. Also, uh, everybody, three days left. You have 72 hours left for the biggest promotion of the year, MAPS HIT. So HIT is high intensity interval training. This is a fat burning, short, intense workout. It's a style of training that has been shown to burn as many calories as longer workouts. Of course, this one was written by Justin, Adam, and myself. So it's all very, very good done properly. There's three levels beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It's utilizing weights, so you get the strength training component in there. And, of course, it's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com. And use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for that massive discount. Again, you got three days left. Act now. And it's t-shirt time. Ah, oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. We have three winners for iTunes and three winners for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Killer Chaos 0221, C2 Laws, and Love Love Happy Puppies. For Facebook, we have Sarah Kermis, Mike Sankey, and Eduardo Mendoza. All of your winners and the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your sh shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. What is that, Sal? What? The thing with the straw in it looks like a fucking steroid bottle. It's uh, <laughs> it is steroids. Oh, cool. I'm on, I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the roids now. They're obviously not working very well. Well, I just the, started on the sauce. <laughs> I just started. Can you imagine how strong I'll be when I'm on the gear. 
No, it's it's uh, you know what that is? Let's run a cycle. Imagine. No, we're not gonna run a cycle. Imagine. Right? Let's go, dude. Let's get gorilla. I'm comfortable. Let's get gorilla strong. No, I'm comfortable Let's with my like with my chimp strength. Insane. I don't need the gorilla strength. <laughs> uh huh. That's uh, you know, that's that's red panex ginseng. You need to take it in a fucking ample like that. It's ample. It's a it's a old school. So this company's been around forever. There's no spawn. There's no affiliation, by the way. So. Yeah. There's no, there's no discount code. But anyway, <laughs> this company is a really steroid vial of yeah. ginseng. Yeah. No, oh, man. No, they make like these little liquid vials of, of ginseng extract and red panics. Ginseng is the real, that's like the legit ginseng because there's Siberian ginseng, but it's not from the ginseng family. Still has value. Siberian ginseng still has value, but it's different. Red panics. Ginseng is the one that's, that's been studied forever. It's more of a, uh, Chinese medicine would say a yang, or yang energy, you know, so it's more male energy. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a little bit stimulating. It's good for sperm motili- uh, uh, motility. Uh, testosterone can raise testosterone What's in that? men Helps with them low move testosterone. Faster. Yeah, it makes them move better. It, 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 your sperms are more mobile. They, like, it's like tails like, flip a little bit. Like faster. they did Maps Prime Pro. You know what I mean? They just get around the yeah. get around the cracks and wow. stuff better. Uh, wow, that's but exciting. anyway, it comes it comes in like this little glass bottle that I remember my dad used to have these back in the day when I was first started working out. So he had like a box of them. Mm. And when I was fourteen, I thought supplements were the secret. I thought for sure if you take supplements. Oh yeah, you're gonna get. Well, that's fucking, how they were marketed. You're gonna get jacked. Yeah. I don't. Even, I've never told this story before. So my dad had an old protein powder. He never took. He just bought it once. Never took it. And it had a picture. <laughs> it had a picture of Weeder on it. Remember the one with Weeder where he's oh, crossed his arms, big yeah. ass forearms, and yeah. he's all jacked, yeah. and he's got the beard. Right. I remember yeah, yeah. that. And it was called. Uh, uh, it's like a handlebar mustache. Yeah, it was yeah. called uh, Weeder's Muscle Builder. That was the name of the protein powder. And then next to it was a box of these ampules. And I remember when I was 14, I'm like, he's not using this anymore. And I snuck over there, cracked open a couple ampules, drank them, took a little protein powder, worked out. Yeah. I was like, for sure, I'm going to be jacked. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like, how many days did it take to realize it's not doing shit? Yeah. So this is the, that was the beginning of the, the, uh, the addiction yeah. uh, that I've struggled with. Now, do you, <laughs> where, keep when was your peak? When, we, when would you say you were peaking out? I was about 20. Peaking like how? Like the what amount of stuff you were trying. Oh, my it. God, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I, know you want to know. I, I peaked out like early 24 fitness days, probably 21 to 23-ish I peaked out. Dude. Like I, I, it was when we had that. Remember when we? Now, had, how long did the peak last? Because that's where a I couple think I'm years, at. Yeah. That's it. Two years? Because no, I no. had a peak that lasted. Well, well, maybe a few, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, somewhere between two and four years, probably when yeah. I was like, uh, yeah. you know, I had a, like Just a, everything under the sun. Oh yeah, like you know, twelve bottles mm-hmm. of yeah. things that that I was. I taking. tried a summer of that when I was playing football. I was like, I, this is the this is the summer. You know, that I'm just getting as big and jacked as I possibly ever could. So I had to, like, try every single supplement that was, like, legal at the time and, like, put, you know, all that together and try. didn't even, like, focus more on my workouts. Just thought that was going to do it. And it did nothing. Yeah, it got me fatter. So, (laughs) it's so annoying. I bought this stack from, well, first I bought Cybergenics. I did that once. You guys remember that? It was, like, a box and it had, the ads were a picture of a fat dude that got really ridiculously shredded. So, it was, like. I was like, of course this is going to work. Look at this fat guy. He got jacked yeah, in 30 days. Obviously. And it cost 170 bucks. That was the other thing I thought. Of course it's going to work. It costs a shit ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't yeah, so charge I'm, this dude, much I'm, otherwise. I'm 15 years old. I am working, uh, uh, washing dishes at a, at a pizza place. And so I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid cash back then. Wow. Uh, so, you know, the, the guy used to give me cash or whatever. So in order to buy it, I had to get a money order to send in the mail over to them. So oh, I my get, God. So I went out through all this. I saved my money and everything, got this box of supplements, and it was five bottles of garbage. Did nothing for me. So then later on, I'm like, okay, that that didn't work, but this other one's going to work. And it was EAS. Early, I think it was EAS, early, early EAS. And they had a stack where it was glutamine, vanadyl sulfate, and something else. It, it, basically nothing. Didn't do shit for me. Um, and then later on, I found creatine, and then that sparked more like, oh, creatine works. Everything else must work too. You know, I, if you're if you're a listener, you have to be wondering too. Like, wait a second, I thought these guys were pretty smart guys. They were. <laughs> how were they taking these supplements and they not working? We they, learned through hey. experience. Well, it, not <laughs> we were always smart. mistakes. Not only that, but there there is a um, uh, there's like a false truth 
uh, of taking them that happens also, right? I don't know if that's the, the term. We're going to use that term for now because I can't think of a better one. All right. False truth. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. But it's, it's been determined. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but what happens is- It's an oxymoron. You don't put this together till later. At least I didn't put this together till way later. Is probably- Because you, you do see some change. You do see some results. But what you start to piece together is that when you're spinning as a kid, when you spend all of your- your money that you made for the month or whatever on these pills, you bet your ass I didn't miss a workout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was consistent. You know, I was doing it. I was doing everything I could because I was spending that money and I want it to work. And so I don't want to waste my money. So you see some changing gains, yeah. but it's probably more so because I was consistent with my lifting and my diet and doing those things more than anything else and not the actual supplements. Yeah. And so I think you, you fall into this, this false truth or whatever yeah. for, years of trying different things and going like, oh, that worked more than this. Or, and really it was what it was. Because it does affect your behavior some level for the positive. Well, I even remember when I finally did put that together, I still was taking supplements and I would justify it by that. I'd say, well, at the end of the day, I know that when I spend money on this, <laughs> I'm going to be more consistent. Yeah. I don't want to waste my money. So it's working yeah. in a sense. You're right? like so, more focused. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when uh, when the, they had designer steroids over the counter. Um, they were and, I, and they, they were called pro hormones. Okay. Right. But they were not pro hormones. They were active. They were banned steroids. <laughs> they were banned. They were yeah. active steroids. But they they discontinued. They, they, it was like a gray market. Like they they slipped through regulation because the way that the that, that steroids were regulated back then, you could alter the chemical by a little bit, yeah. and then it wasn't by like one molecule. It wasn't explicitly banned. You may grow a tail, but you know you'll get jacked. And you know how they found these drugs? They would go through old discarded pharmaceutical company yeah. drugs that that didn't pass FDA regulation, <laughs> and then they'd say, "Oh, let's make this one." But anyway, I remember buying the first one. It was uh, it was a Super Draw was the name of it, and um, I remember taking that, and then that worked. I remember taking that and I was like, whoa, what is going on here? Yeah. Going off was not fun. Yeah, I took a a, a a trend one. I forgot what it was called though. It was a it was a it was definitely like taking trend and it was an over the counter mm -hmm. supplement. And I re you know, as a kid, and I don't, know if, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I mean we, we were savvy to this hustle. You know, that that was the the supplement game was get something, you sell it. Kids go use it. They definitely feel it because it's a fucking hormone that they're uh -huh. taking. Yeah. They end up they end up seeing results. People come back because then it catches wind. They ban it, but then you go buy it under the counter, mm. right? All the because now you're getting rid of your stock. Yeah, all the all exactly yeah. all the stores still carried it, but it was like a hush hush thing, and then uh -huh. they normally raise the price on it. You didn't care because you knew it worked. That's why you got keep it there till all the kids come back. With and because acne. it got banned, and you're a kid. You definitely want it. Oh, you're buying ten bottles. Yeah, because you know it's real. Yeah, so, you're like I'm going to use this forever. Yeah, that I mean they did that forever. <laughs> they did. I got terrible side effects from a couple of them, and it, as I got older and researched the actual chemicals that were in there, I realized these are worse than the actual, and these are worse than the black market steroids. Some of these chemicals are not not great. I wonder if they lost like an insane amount of profits because of that. Because that was the hustle, right? Was to get all those like because they were the most expensive thing you could buy in the store was when they kept kind of under the counter. Oh yeah, a lot of those. Sh it was shops a quick. Were, they were making a quick million. All, you know what I mean, your yeah. your uh, you know Nutri Shops and Max Muscles, those mm -hmm. are all going under, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. it's tough to especially with Amazon today. Yeah. Not to mention that the the big hustle and those the other hustle is. You you carry products that are most popular right now, right? So you look at like what are the, the top twenty supplements that are sold. You carry those products in your store, but you make crap margins because it's somebody else's stuff. Then what you do is you, as a store, you make your own line because mm -hmm. it's it's relatively cheap to make all those products. You just make it look the same or whatever, right? And you make the macros pretty similar to the back of whatever the other the other the expensive supplements are. And then you employ people and you teach them. That hey, when people come in and they look, they want the Myoplex, whatever, or they want the great cell tech or this, that, you push the 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 NutriShop brand or you push the Max yeah. Muscle brand because one, we're gonna sell it for cheaper, two, we're gonna make way more money yeah. off of it. And that's how they get that's how they do that. Dude, I went so far as to I actually would would uh, learn about the chemistry of certain compounds and start to try to figure out how to combine them, which were, you know, <laughs> I am I am not a scientist yes. or a chemist, 
So the results that you always wanted to be. Yeah, no, I just wanted to just figure. So, I thought I would. Yeah. I thought I was gonna be like an You're alchemist like hacking in the, back. the system. Yeah. yeah, like I was like like yeah. uh, <laughs> what's that scientist in Spider Man that becomes a lizard? You know, oh, like I'm yeah. in the back. Like, yeah. Oh fuck, bah, I'm a monster. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to, with disastrous results, often I remember combining <laughs> different stimulants because this one's a beta, you know, two antagonist, and this one, you know, helps. I combine all these stimulants together, and I remember, dude, one day I had a, I had a four hour workout, and I was sweating out of my eyeballs. And I remember coming home and laying on my bed. I was like seventeen, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and I was laying on my bed, and my heart was. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I remember thinking, like, this is how I'm gonna go. Like that's, <laughs> that sucks, you know. What's what I'm the, so you actually would would buy all these individually mm -hmm. and then concoct them together. Like, what was the craziest combination you put together? Well, I combined. Don't do this. This is a yeah, terrible combination. Ephedra, uh, yeah. aspirin. And I bought, so I did ephedra, aspirin, and caffeine yeah. before they were yeah. selling it together because I figured out that they how they could work together. Then I'd throw some some uh, yohimba, yohimbi in there. Jesus. Um, and then I'd throw in some siniferin. And that, it was just, <laughs> it was just a terrible, uh, yeah. We so. did it for the audience, though. We did all of this for you guys. Yes. Yeah. We knew this one was, day. Yeah. yeah. I survived <laughs> so I could teach you. It just barely made it through. That's why that's why God yeah. didn't take me. Yeah. He's like, I'll let you live. So yeah, you, you, need share to, this. you need to pass this help, on. Help the other kids. You need to share this story. A, t a terrible transition, but I, I wanted to ask you the other day, uh, especially you, Sal, because you always have an opinion with this stuff. Oh, great. Uh, did you see the law that California passed, the Assembly 5? Did you see what that was? No. No. What is it? So let me guess. It's a stupid law. Of course it is. <laughs> right. Nah. Well, I mean, is it though? I mean, there's going to be, obviously there's, it passed. Like it's against the law to be mean. It passed. We so solved it. Obviously there's a good portion of California that thinks it's a good idea. Yeah. That doesn't always, that usually <laughs> yeah, 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 means yeah. it's a yeah. good idea. Sometimes it just means all the fools are on the same yeah, side, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's basically it's going to make, uh, it's really coming after Uber and DoorDash and all these, these companies. And it will, it's going to force them to recognize all the people that are doing Uber or doing DoorDash as employees. Oh, not contract? Yep. Uh, Stupid. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. The, the, the benefits of Uber Let's and DoorDash. That's a good thing. Yeah. The reason why they're such uh, successful companies and, and, and have created so many opportunities for people is because they don't have to go through all that red tape. Rigmarole. Right. Because what's going to happen now is, is the services oh, the are going to become far more expensive it's going to be harder to just employ yourself. A lot of people who do Uber like that. Uh, the the people that I talk to who do Uber love the fact that they can just turn it on whenever they want. Yeah. Do their job whenever they want. That it's very easy. They can go, in, you know, come in and out. It's a that gig economy added so many jobs um, for so many people. Um, and this is a great example of a law with a good intention, but is not based it's on any stifle. Is like, it really a good momentum. intention? I don't think it's a good. No, intention. they want their cut. I think they. Pre I think they present it to the the population as uh, good intentions that we're oh we're looking out for you guys to get benefits and protect you and blah 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 or the safety of the people that are taking Uber. I think they present it like that, but it's really to stifle be, their growth. Right, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were lobbies uh, on the other side that were. Or, you know, companies like taxi companies or of course. hotel companies or whatever, yeah. trying to you know use government, which is the favorite business, favorite tactic of big business. Did you guys government. see the? You guys have to go buy this. Who ever? Did either one of you guys ever go by the prune yard? Yeah. Okay, the Shell station. Okay, the Shell station. This just, I just went by there because uh, I get my hair cut over there. So I just went by there two days ago. Never seen this before. I pull up to the Shell station real quick. I was actually going in there to look for like a rock star or something. I pull up and next on the property of the gas station is this like trailer and it's a completely, and it has a little ramp that goes up it and it's, it's a all glass sliding windows and it's like a giant vending machine that you walk into, but you can only walk in after you swipe your card and you pay for the stuff that's in it. And it's a little store. Oh, what? what? Never seen this before. What the hell? So you don't need anybody operating. It Nobody's working. operating. Oh, it. that's brilliant. Right? Oh, that's very smart. Yes. Oh, very interesting. Huh. I, I I didn't use it. 
Uh, I should have because so I could have talked about it a little bit better. But I mean, I kind of looked at it and to try and figure out how. I'm it sure works. California will pass a law that you required to have two yeah, employees. You have to at least have somebody manning it. Yeah, working in. But have you guys seen anything like this before? No, I no. haven't. No, it's it's literally like a giant, and it has all the like most popular things that you probably drive through at midnight to want to get it from a gas station that might be closed. So you just swipe your cart, walk in, oh, wow. get what you want. Yes, and get out. Oh, that's very smart. Yeah, and it's all got. You could tell it's got cameras everywhere, so it's being it's oh, being right. It's, so it's being, being monitored. So somebody tries to smash, you know, through and break. Right. Whatever. Or probably if you try and take what you didn't pay for, because yeah. that, that's the part that was kind of confusing to me. It's like it's all locked up, but then it has this big digital keypad and you, you Does it just maybe release the thing you paid for. It didn't. If I remember. Did it, you go inside? No, I did. But it's all oh. glass. So I was looking all inside. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I don't. And that's the part that I couldn't figure out because it isn't it didn't have it like locked up. Once you're in there, it looks like you could grab whatever you want it. That's huh. great. But yeah, it's also, again, it's monitored. So maybe it's they're testing it to see, well, you know, will people only grab what they pay for? Just little pop-up uh, trailers like that. I'm mean, sure yeah. I'm sure there's safeguards to prevent, you know, a theft or whatever. Yeah. I'm well, sure. Well, I mean, if yeah, the, the safeguards, I would assume, is the, the cameras that are all on it. And I think like, okay, are you really going to, all the items in there can't be over three dollars sure. you know what i'm saying so they're probably not risking a lot for somebody who's going to go in there and like what are you going to do mm-hmm. you know still thirty dollars put a lot of thirty dollars worth yeah thirty dollars worth of chips to get <laughs> to get uh to go to jail you know what i'm <laughs> yeah. saying like you got to be yeah. a pretty i needed those doritos i don't know man 13 year old me would have been like scoop these chips up they're I free. Don't, you lie you didn't you when we did the thing the other day you, you didn't steal anything nah, ever. You're right. I, yeah. I, I thought you had it. stolen something Nah, i think i stole beads once Beads, beads for my jacket. Yeah, remember when we used beads. to wear parkas back in the day, and you put oh beads on the God. you put beads on the on the, <laughs> Bro, the I drawstring. For, I forgot. My buddy, uh, do you remember that? I forgot about that. When, but yeah, like the parkas. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. When we were, I think up, that's what I stole once. When we were up in Tahoe last Sorry week. Sorry for for the company I stole it from. My buddy uh, <laughs> went up and saw his dad, and you know, I wish my parents still had all this stuff. He, his dad still has like his his parka from when he was in uh, like seventh grade or whatever. It's oh, yeah. forty nine, and so he's rocking the old starter forty nine er parka. Dude. I was like, oh, Legit. the ones that you're literally talking about that used to put the beads yes. on and stuff. Yes, yeah. I bet mean, that'd be in fashion right now. No, it is. It's so uh, cool. I yeah. told him I was like, man, if I had mine, I'd still rock it right now. I had the one with the big forty nine er thing on the back. It was black, so the forty nine er thing was red. It was yeah. black, and then my beads were they were red, uh, red, gold, and white. I think or red, yeah, uh, red and white. I don't remember red, gold and white. It was something like that, mm. and it was all the way down the the strings, wow. and I stole them like yeah. an asshole. Thanks See, for reminding me. Adam. You were a little bit fashionable back then, a little bit, yeah. yeah. But maybe you were off by a decade or so. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this was like a few years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Last, it was last week. Yeah, yeah. Was, I stole yeah. the beads last week. Like, yeah, that was cool in <laughs> sixth grade. Let's yeah. see here, where were you at then? At the time? Oh, dude, uh, did you guys? Okay, so I know you guys watched the fight with uh, Cerrone and Bro, uh, can I just, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Can I just tell you? Okay, that fight was what thirty or forty five seconds. I I did not get. I would. I never would have guessed it would have gone. Dude, uh, was, looked like he went through five. Five rounds yeah. of an ass beating. His face was jacked. Well, up so I read about his injuries. You ready for this? Oh shit! So he's been he got his face got jacked up so bad that they told him he can't fight for six months. Whoa! It, he got a broken nose and a fractured fractured orbital bone. Oh, wow! From those shoulders, like I mean, that had to contribute to it. Then he then ate the, a kick, though. Remember? A kick, yeah, a knee and then a yeah. kick. Oh, I yeah, oh, look at that, man! Yeah, he looks dang, like <laughs> dang. I can't see anything. Yeah, it's. Dude, from a 30-second fight, you got your ass beat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, dude, Ma- dude, Ma- McGregor came in hot. McGregor's a, he proves to be a um, like a master, uh, what's the word, strategist. Yes. He, you know, he spends a lot. I think people don't give him enough credit for how much he, he I, really studies. Remember when he, remember I think when it's he beat, hilarious the people that talk shit and say he's terrible. There's a lot. so stupid. There's a big group of people that think he's he's just he's only taking the fights that he can win, and he's this. He gets lucky, and he's blah, blah, blah. Bro. Dude, he's winning in three different weight classes. You name me another fighter that's been able to do that. There's no, not. no, he's, he's, he's a good fighter. Remember when he fought um, Jose and, Aldo? And, it, every, and, he, and he hit him yeah, with that shot exactly. that... It's all strategy. You know, yeah. every fight he, com- he comes with something different that mm-hmm. you just, I mean, who saw those shoulders coming? Yeah. 
I've I, never even seen just, that someone he brought something new. I've it, never it, seen somebody yeah. break a nose with their shoulder like that. Uh, uh, you know what's funny? It was a, a damn impressive performance. A lot of the moves that you see in, in MMA that don't seem that serious are actually very serious. You ever watch them the stomp? foot stomp? Yes. Oh, I know. You oh. know that hurts. Okay. Oh. Well, so, I mean, have you ever yeah. stomped on someone's foot or had your foot stomped bro, off? I, that, that sucks. It's terrible. So, I, I mean, I used to, of course, I trained judo and jujitsu, so we were barefoot. And mm -hmm. if someone stepped on the top of your foot just on accident not even stomping on it yeah that shit hurt yeah you oh, hit yeah. someone with the heel on the top yeah, of the foot and you yeah. can't put as much pressure that, that's the other thing too yeah. you get those like leg kicks those inside leg kicks oh. like for your front foot like now it's like all of a sudden you got to kind of like readjust your balance yeah. and then you're fucked i don't know how those guys have you guys ever gotten kicked by a, a tie fighter in yeah your thigh? yeah i got kicked and that dude and then it's sore for days dude I, oh that hurts i don't understand how they don't go down yeah. the first time dude if they go full force like man yeah your legs will buckle so i held uh pads for a pro uh female tie fighter so she it wasn't even a guy it was a girl yeah she was like 150 pound female and i held the pad and i was like wow if that hit me yeah i would be dead yeah like, I can't. yeah no it's a lot of force you can generate if I, yeah if they get really good at it tremendous i i just can't believe he looks like he went through five rounds of war yeah, yeah. no well all with the shoulder shot which was obviously he studied and designed and, and implemented specifically yep because that's not like that's not like a move that he does no and each every one of his shots like were, were landing it was very like pinpoint accuracy like that's the thing it's like you gotta you gotta give credit where credits due like yeah. he put on a, a great performance he's a com he's a brilliant promoter and a obviously amazing strategist in fighting what a what a crazy combination to make him one of the highest paid yeah. you know fighters of all time just yep. because he's so he's good but yeah. he makes you want to watch his fight which that's the thing too. If if you're an athlete, especially if you're a fighter, a big winning, yes, winning's important, but so is promoting yourself and making people want to come did, watch. Your did fight. any of you guys read up on? Because I imagine Dana probably. I mean, well, how begged, happy was he? Well, I, I'm sure he <laughs> begged him yeah, to come back. I mean, I'm sure there was there was the possibility that he may not ever come back after that yeah, payout. He didn't have to with May with the Mayweather fight. He 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 could fight MMA for the next five years and he won't make the amount of money that he made in that one fight mm -hmm. with Mayweather. Mm -hmm. So the thought that this guy may never come back to the UFC was very very possible. You got to think that Dana begged the shit out of him, and you got to know that Connor knows this and was smart and i bet he negotiated like i mean obviously he negotiated his proper 12 in the yeah. ring mm -hmm. yeah you saw that that was over. part of that i know he got three million to what cowboys to, what to fight right a few hundred thousand or something yeah like that. yeah he got it i know he got under a million for sure i think it was was it eight hundred thousand it was like five hundred or two hundred like that yeah know. maybe look that up doug i don't remember what uh, what it actually was but i know it was a, a huge discrepancy how's his how's his uh whiskey company doing yeah, it's a good question. I'm sure it's still like doing well. I Is it know. really? I mean, I know he punches people that don't drink Dude, it. That, that's nah, terrible. I mean, yeah, that, that <laughs> just was like we don't want to bring that. I mean, up. Let's not bring that part. Of it. I like the guy, but I don't like that at all. Like that. That was like some bullshit. That uh, you I know. was actually surprised that it didn't come up on the fight. I, oh, that he did like, that. Like Cowboy would have thrown yeah. that in his no, face. No, I mean, yeah, just I. Don't, I felt like that. I mean, that's that was a big deal, and it happened r r relatively recent. And oh. you would think that 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 would people would have been kind of bashing him about that. I felt like there was there yeah. wasn't really much uh, publicity on that shit. I didn't. I had heard about it and didn't see anything until just until mm -hmm. I when I was up in. Tahoe and my buddies were, were about to watch the fight and my buddies were like, I fucking hate him. Oh, I remember when that happened and I was like, oh, what the fuck? And they fuck? showed what me the video. Doing? I just watched the video for the first time and um, yeah, I didn't realize how bad Dude, it was. I just, uh, I just looked up how much Connor's uh, Proper twelve. Made. Oh my god, two hundred thousand is all he. Well, he sold Wait. two. He sold two hundred thousand cases in six months. In the initial six months, and says it's about to double. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's well. That cases. was like right before the Mayweather fight, right? That's like, the yeah. That's because that was when he dude. was launching it. He's got himself a. He's got himself a a, a very big company on his hands. What yeah. is it? What is it uh, valued at? Does it say? No, I didn't look. I don't look that estimated. Far. See what estimated value is on proper twelve. There's got to be an article yeah. on that for sure. Wow. That's, wow, that's crazy. And the, what's the markup on 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 whiskey? It's got to be oh, really it's good, great. right? Yeah. 
Is yeah, it on hard alcohol? Yeah, for sure. Well, and I'm sure he's. I'm. Is, I'm sure he's selling it at a higher price point too, just because of his name attached to mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Anyway, I was getting a, a nice little argument today on uh, on the social medias. Oh, on the social medias. <laughs> on yeah. the socials. I haven't done that in a long time. You, you know, sound like like my fucking dad or mom talking about yeah, social yeah, media. That's why I say it that way. The social medias yeah, on the on the on the World Wide Web. What was it that you used to say? What did you used to say to the YouTube when uh, you when you used to? Yeah. Hey, YouTubers. YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. It's your YouTubers. <laughs> That's what you used to say when we on the YouTube channel when we first started. You South. should bring that back, dude. Hey, right? YouTubers. Yeah. Hey, YouTubers. <laughs> so, That's your South Stefano here. So somebody made a post saying how, because, you know, they're talking about how this, this whole thing with Iran was happening or whatever. And they're like, at least, uh, you know, at least it'll be good for the economy, you know, if we if we go to war. What a terrible, what? that's the worst myth. That's a myth. You Haven't you Who heard people that? say that? You never heard people say that before? No. That, of course, that no, war is good for the economy. Oh, like in general, yeah, yeah, like it's great boost for the economy. Yeah, I've what been, a I haven't heard that about terrible, Iran. stupid myth. It's so it's the worst What's thing for the economy. It's a false signal. It's it's not just false. It's it's what what do we do when we make for war? We make things that we blow up. <laughs> I mean, we're, <laughs> we're making we're we're making or things we, that we we cement tanks and airplanes yeah, that uh, we explode yeah. or and then we kill people Once or become we're done killed. With it. It's the worst thing for the economy. Terrible, terrible myth. Not true at all. Don't believe that bullshit. Well, I think- it looks like it because we can just print money. That's why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you get you create jobs, you create work, you create things that people have to go create and sell for millions well, of dollars. There's no accountability where that money's going, anyways. You know, yeah. it's like we really need more money going there. No, it's no. like it's like uh, it would be like saying, "Hey, we just start. We just created a hundred thousand jobs. Uh, what you got to do is get this shovel." Dig up this hole, fill it back up, show up tomorrow, do the same thing. Everybody's like, "Yeah, hey, oh. we got jobs." Yeah, <laughs> that's not how it works. It's you, you, you need you need to produce things and you need to increase efficiency. Otherwise, there is no net gain. Yeah, and war is a loss. It's always a loss. It's well, a terrible, I just heard. I heard that. Well, I I feel like they'll probably end up wanting to pull even more money now to like stay in some like quote unquote arms race with like hypersonic uh, technology. So oh. if you heard about that, like I guess there's like hypersonic type missiles that like Russia is developing and all this. <laughs> and trying to put out there and so you know of course we want to make sure that we're in the game too and so i'm sure lots of money is going to be asked to kind of catch up on that front <laughs> yeah that's what we know who knows what's i know we like, don't know i don't know why, I, there's, I, there's just always something like that why economy grows and, and how it dies by peter schiff is like a must read I oh think. right i think i mean i was sharing with you guys that probably one of the better books that i've read in the last couple of years especially about economics and if you're not into economics it's such a good read for you because they they tell he tells it in almost like a children's story and so it's a really easy fun Mm -hmm. read but it just makes so much sense and and they use characters uh in the story that represent real people Mm -hmm. uh and real politicians and stuff so it's really cool all it is all economics is 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 how people are working together to create more efficient systems to become more efficient to be more productive yeah that's all it is so how do we create wealth? Money has no value unless it's it means something. And what it means, the, the, the value of it goes up if things become more efficient. So if it took before 10 people to do one thing, not only takes five people, we've increased efficiency and that's a boost to the economy. So that's when, <coughs> when people are like, oh, econ- economics is boring. It's actually the most one of the most important things you should probably learn about. Dude, you brought up uh, TikTok the other day about being like the next, you know, sort of biggest app, you know, well, it was out of the, all of them, right? It was the, the yeah, and it was the second most downloaded in 2000. Only WhatsApp was the only one that was more downloaded in 2019. So I heard some interesting uh news behind that in terms of like its origin. So it's a, actually it's a Chinese company. Right. And so I guess the military has banned it from any active military person from uh, using it because there's espionage stuff like tied into that just like Huawei the phone so I wouldn't put a lot of my like eggs in that in that basket you know what what a brilliant strategy make a free market product that people adopt but it's but you actually own you know, you got ways of you know, using the user it data to spy. Yeah, so exactly. So that, that, that there's a big concern there that they're just now starting to kind of talk about. Well, if you wow, think about it, it's so, interesting. Think about it, something like Facebook. You, you imagine, like, you know, 20 years ago, CIA is like, how do we get people to give us all their information about them <laughs> willingly without spying on <laughs> yeah. them? Yeah. How do we do this and you know yeah. invent Facebook? Yeah, or they've whatever. they've they've done it, dude. Speaking of China, uh, they they have quarantined their first city. 
you hear about this virus that's going uh, crazy over there? Oh, what was that virus called again? Uh, coronavirus, coronavirus, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, coronavirus. What right? does that look like when they do that? They just blo- block off, no one comes in, no that's one goes right. out type of deal? Yep, you can't go in or out. And the Bro, only could people- you imagine uh, being a scary in, place in, to be? Yeah, I know, involved in that? So my instinct, now I know that what they're doing, and it's probably, who knows, if it's necessary. I mean, because China's such a populated place, and some places are so densely populated yeah. that you might have to take those measures, especially to stop a pandemic. Yeah. But what would your instinct be if all of a sudden you're like, can't leave San Jose? Leave? Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, fuck you. Like, yeah, I'm Stop out of me. Here. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> Drive through the barricade. <laughs> but you got to like, think everybody's like that, right? Yeah. So Ugh. so they quarantined uh, the city of Wuhan um, to stop the, the spread of this pneumonia-like Wuhan. virus. And then the UK has its first cases. Scotland got its first cases of people with coronavirus. Oh, no. And there's been people in California oh, no. who've gotten it's it as well. Is yeah. it a type of a flu? What is it? It causes pneumonia. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it causes pneumonia, and it's pretty nasty. It can be deadly, nice. but it's not like a instantly deadly type of thing. But fucking China, man, they a lot of shit comes out of there because they're so densely populated, and they eat fucking all kinds of shit. Like, they think coronavirus came from snake. What? Yeah, like people eating snake and stuff, and it was like a, an animal virus that became wow. Yeah, you know. Oh, interesting. That mutated and now can spread through humans. You know, along the lines of all don't this be eating snake, man. Crazy tech in the future <laughs> and stuff like that. Did you see what the the police face recognition uh, recognition recognition recognition? recognition thank you. <laughs> I like a, recognition. Yeah, recognition. <laughs> it's been a while since There's I made another a library. You better recognition uh, me. Uh, addition. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? No. no. Oh, pull that up, though. That's that's wild. So they, and I guess it's been really helping. I mean, obviously, think about that. If you have, we have the tech to be able to figure that out. If you're searching, you're looking for somebody and you have the ability to scan scan their face through cameras or whatever and then be mm-hmm. told, like, oh, well, that's Sal DiStefano. That's who, that's the rapist we're looking for. Wow. Oh, and you go, <laughs> <laughs> wow. How dare you put that out there? That's the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you used him as a reference and not me for once. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. He, he posted me as like the, the butthole tickler on his, uh, yeah. on his I am story not, one time. I am I'm not, not, that wasn't me, that's, man. Hey, that is I am my, not a raper. That, yeah. it, there is only, that is the only post that I repurpose every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like every year. Because it's, it's like, so good. Oh, oh shit. It is goes so again. good. Uh, I, I forget who originally, that's, that was like four years ago when someone first shared that with me, like the actual post. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, this is a real news story? Are yeah, it was a, it would look like a real shot from- So uh, tell me about this facial recognition. Yeah. So it's just really, really effective? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's extremely effective. But then now they're 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 freaking out that we, we can't, we shouldn't be able to do this. It's turning into demolition, man. I mean, so it's one of these things that, okay- that's great that we have this ability, but what's what's the negative side? Oh, here we go. It gives people. It, it's it's raising alarms. Yeah. So that's not what scares me as much as the next thing. So that's that's okay. That could be definitely. Well, here's here's the, so if you read the article, it has like little minor flaws to it, and so that's mm. what they're worried about is that, you know, it's not a hundred percent accurate. It's really yeah. accurate, and it's helping them like crazy, but even if it's one percent wrong, like. How fucked up is that, right? You get tackled, yeah. your your face pops Start up. Wearing and my looks- fake nose. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, so so here's what really frightens me. Did you know that? And I, and this for sure is going to be used in the future. Hundred percent. It's too powerful not to. Scientists can map out images based off of brain scans. Scans. So they've done this with monkeys. Map out what? So they've done this with monkeys and humans. You think of a picture, and a computer oh, picking I've up your brain it. scans. We'll draw the picture yeah. that you're thinking, dude. What? Yeah, yes. bro. No, I've seen they this. They can see what you're thinking. Ugh. That's fucked up. What think about I? don't think about how crazy this is going to be. You're like in a counseling session. If this, <laughs> yeah. but like if they dicks. allow them to do this, <laughs> why? Because why would there be happen? <laughs> just, it's, I'm just saying. <laughs> isn't it a demolition man that has this? Isn't it a demolition man that has that? Because if you think about this, if you're looking for all these people that are wanted, like how many people are probably wanted? There's got to be a ton of. There's got to uh, be millions, uh, right? I don't know. Last time I counted, it, it was a three thousand. Stupid. I don't know. There's got to be a lot, though, right? Yeah. yeah. There's got to be a lot of people. Some that- people aren't even wanted, though. That's the sad part. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. But, I mean, that really hits me. We've got, feels. we've got, we've got cameras <laughs> everywhere now. 
I mean, you you won't be able to go to an ATM. You won't be able to eat out at a fast Bro, food restaurant. It, it goes even further than that. Every phone has a camera. Right. What if you just connected to every phone? Yeah, and they then already started, did that. Yes, they already I mean, did that in a movie. On. I'm sure. Batman. They did. I mean, like explained all this already. And it, my, <laughs> Minority Report did it too, right? Is it Minority Report? Yeah, Minority that did Report. It yeah. So they had precogs, which that was like unnecessary. Like we're gonna need like these, uh, you know, people with like ES ESP to like figure out. No, we need we have computers, super computers that are doing. Wow. Well, also, oh. hundred thousand people are. Uh, on the America's Most Wanted list is that is that what it says? And one million of these warrants are felonies and a pro- wow, that's a lot, dude. See, a, yeah. Now, how do you guys feel about this? About what the, it, uh, to you be able to use technology like this? Now, if I mean, if you could, depends who's using it. Well, the police. I, I know they started doing this just just to see like like tendencies and, and patterns in, in areas, and they would just focus in on like some of these areas where they would like bring more police uh, to to make sure that like they would catch it in the act, and and they were like really successful with that. So I, I I'm all for that. I have I you know here's the deal. I don't have too much of an issue with this so long as there's lots of uh, you know as long as we have due process, I don't mind. If due process gets thrown out the window, then this stuff is all fucked. Yeah. So what I mean by that is if they, if the police, if the governments have the ability to take you, snatch you, throw your ass in jail, and kill you, and the on, and they get to make that decision without a trial, without a jury, without you a judge, your peers, yeah, not being involved. That's no, when I have I, a problem. I'm, I'm thinking of just purely for these people. You got a you got a, a million people with warrants out on them, just trying to catch them, right? Yeah, and and I could see that. Not like, do, are you pro them using technology to be able to pinpoint exactly where they're all at? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, man, that's catch them. Yeah, catch those fuckers. I mean, yeah. that's kind of crazy, right? I'm down with it, but again, I, I like yeah. it has to have due process. No, you're right about the court. Yeah, you want to you want to make sure like all that going through the legal system, it, it, it happens. That's why I got so. This is why I'm so. After September 11th, we started passing these crazy federal laws yeah, where, Patriot Acts. where yeah, the government's like, well, if you're a terrorist, you don't need uh, due process. Like, okay, yeah. who determines Straight if I'm a to terrorist? Guantanamo. Yeah, they determine. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I like that. You know what yeah, I mean? It's... Because depending on who's in charge, you, they could start to be. Hey, that's you... a lot of power in one direction. It yeah. is, but the. The reading of the mind stuff scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Because <laughs> you guys know what's in my mind. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I know. I, know. I, don't, want nobody, I don't even have to read it. I know. Yeah. I don't want to draw you a picture right now. Reading yeah. my brain. Yeah. Anyway. I scary. feel like you could hack that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, just real quick, think of something different. No, you can't, bro. Look at this way. Look, let me put it this way. You know, this is how easy it is to fuck with you right now. All right. Right now, don't think of a zebra. Okay. Impossible. Ele- <laughs> elephant. Yeah. Ele- yeah. You know what I'm saying? Though? Elephant. Grass. Yeah, but I don't know why. if you try not to think of a fucking zebra, you're going to. So let's say you go into a police station and they're like, all right, we're going to look into your brain because someone's been wanted for murder. And you're like, all right, don't think of fucking. Next thing you know, you're going to be thinking of crazy fucking shit yeah. in your head. Yeah. Don't, you don't think you could hack that? Like you said zebra, and right away I knew what you're going to do, so I was thinking elephant. Yeah, but you're also mm. thinking of a zebra right now. You're probably thinking of a zebra and an elephant. Oh, so maybe you would draw like an elephant <laughs> that looks like a zebra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would they do it? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Really, really confusing. So you guys, uh, you guys, I see you guys fucking snatching up all the boxes of Magic yeah. Spoon. And oh, well, for- we we had we had the blueberry for like a second, dude. I forgot to tell you that I don't think I brought this up on the show that I fi- I finally got an I got another order, and I think they were sold out the first time that I ordered um, mine, and the second time they had the blueberry, and I know you talked about it before. Yeah, holy crap! Have it's you had the, the blueberry best one, in? dude. I taste so. You guys know I can't have dairy, so I can have a little bit, but not much because it'll bother me. But, but yeah. I did taste the blueberry, and it's really good. I don't we, know what we magic. Eat it knowing you can't. Have I don't know what magic they're doing it. over there to make uh, it have a. You know, you could make a thirty grams protein serving of cereal. You know what I think is funny? Yeah. I saw on our our, our forum, our forum. I love you guys. You guys are always yeah. so quick yeah, to, to the, like tear something apart. Put, or put like, their opinions out there. This is so expensive, and I'm like, it, it's so funny when I hear that because it, they're comparing it to the price of Cheerios or some shit. Yeah, that, <laughs> and what you're of course what yeah. you're paying for when you pay for a product corn. like this. You are paying for the protein. It's the reason why a Snickers bar is a tenth of the price of a protein bar. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why you pay three dollars for a protein bar and you pay fifty cents for a Snickers bar. It's because the Snickers bar is just a bunch of sugar and stuff like that. And not that the the protein bar doesn't have that too, but it's also got twenty to thirty something grams of protein. You eat one bowl of this cereal, you're getting Dude, like thirty to forty grams of what, protein. That's what, without milk. One yeah, and a half. Right. One and a half cups of this. That's a nice little serving. It's not even a huge serving. One right. and a half cups. You're going to have 12 grams of fat, 16 grams of carbs, of which there's fiber in there, no sugar, so sugar-free, and 24 grams of protein, not including the milk. That's a small 
When an app, you tell me any other yeah. c- cereal that does it. Oh, and by the way, it tastes like kid cereal. Yeah. Well, forget a cereal. Find a meal that has those macros that doesn't cost you yeah. more than a couple dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. Protein's expensive. No matter how do you how the, are you draw and it. And the up. protein quality is good. It's 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 milk, but the whey protein and the ingredient it's sweetened with things like monk fruit and stevia. It's all natural. Like you can't beat that. Well, that's dude. the double edged sword. We always lean on the quality end of things. That's just how we roll, dude. We look for things that actually like are promoting something that that is filled with what they're what they're trying to promote. Yeah, like, like, they here's have a, the actual amount of protein. Yeah, here's there. a cereal hack: get regular Fruit Loops, sprinkle some whey protein on it, <laughs> blend it in the you know. Yeah, yeah there, of course, go you get, for that. Yeah. Well, a no, bunch of sugar well, and, get, and do yeah. the math on that. Yeah, exactly. It's, what is your What too. is your protein bottle cost you? Actually, you're right. Yes, do yeah. the math on it. That's mm-hmm. the I, I, oh, forget all the other stuff. I'm just talking about the the, the money balk that people always do. Like, yeah. yeah, it's more expensive. So is anything that has twenty to thirty grams of protein. Find me a sandwich, a, a meal out, a, any, a, anything yeah. that has 20, 30 grams of protein in a serving of something, and tell me what the price is. Protein, not gonna, protein's expensive. Carbs are cheap. Yes. Yeah. It's true. So it's just how it works. It's something yeah. that my kids will actually eat, dude. I'm like, whatever. I'm <laughs> I'm going for it. Like This is this is perfect for me. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. It's like if you, if people, when it comes to food, spending money on quality food, eating right, is it is it more expensive sometimes but in the long run in the medium and long run it's not more expensive it's less expensive it's just a way of how you think about it it's it's more expensive to be unhealthy it's more expensive to yeah. eat crappy food it's more expensive to not feel good you know what I'm saying? That's what there's that, that false comparison. It's really not more expensive. If yeah. you take yeah. you know I you, I need 200 grams of protein a day. If I divide up how much my meals cost to get to that number mm-hmm. all day long it's not going to be more than a you know dollar 75 bowl of cereal it just is not going to be it's yeah, a, right. so figure it that way you know people look at it like you like you said compare it to Cheerios or compare it to a generic brand of cereal, like, yeah, you know, well, that's fucking cardboard with fake sugar thrown yeah, on it. Yeah, not hard yeah, to, yeah. it's going to be tough <laughs> to out, out that. price that. So speaking of food quality, did you guys hear about that, that organic farmer that got busted? What? No. So there's this farmer, I got to find the article, damn it. This farmer who, uh, he, he, his crops or his farm or whatever is responsible for about 10% of the organic crops. In the U.S., that's for, a lot for corn and soybeans, right? So this guy produces a shit ton. Well, apparently uh, they weren't organic. He was he was bullshitting, and this whole time he's been making food labeling it organic, and ten percent of the organic market wow. wasn't even organic. Bro, that's a what big, a shyster. Dude, he got busted. A, in that his, is a big amount. Yeah. How, now, how does that get? This is now. Here's the thing for the people he got in big like our friends, like Lane. You know where you know I I I can't help but side with him on this. Is that you know, half of that stuff is such a scam and hustle too. It's what's unfortunate. I mean, yeah. Yeah. something we started with tainted. Something that we started with good intent. This is the reason too why I like I, I like brands like Butcher Box, where you where you know where it's being sourced from, and it's like okay, that versus some some random massive company that you're hoping is you know not pulling all the strings to just to go pass just to pass under the radar as organic. Because you know I can't remember uh, where I read this, but they talk about you know, what you need to do to classify something as organic, and you still can get away with a lot of shit, bro. If you want to, but your ass gets busted. He's getting 10 years. Oh, my, yeah. he is. Yeah, he's getting 10 wow. years. Wow, so, that's a good deterrent. Yes, so you got some deterrent. You're right, though. There's going to be the people do out there. Do we know the brands? Gonna... So, I mean... I, I, there's a lot of brands associated with it. Oh, so one. he's he's a wholesaler too. A bu- that's wow. why it's mainly corn and soy. It was it was so, uh, corn and soy, which okay. I don't eat much. I of. know. I was gonna say that's not really a, no a, a, something I'm looking for. No, anyway. but corn oftentimes gets fed to animals. So if you get like organic beef, if it's not grass fed, right. it's getting fed corn. Dude, ten percent is a lot of the U.S. market. Is a lot. I know, massive. Yeah. Ten years in jail though. So whatever. Wow. Yeah, he'll be getting some organic in jail. I w- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy that organic uh, <laughs> material. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, know. did you guys hear about the, that YouTube kid that that top earner? What's his name? The one that Damn opens it. gifts. I think it's. I think that's is it. it I, that one or the the one that does makeup. 
No, 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 no. Okay, Ryan Kaji, eight year old, who has Ryan's World. It is right. Where yeah, he opens, he's opens the gifts. Right? You know what you made last Ryan's year? Ryan's World. It was like it was nine million or something. You made twenty nine million, uh, twenty six million dollars. Wow, <laughs> the year before was like nine million. Wow, twenty six million dollars he made, and the year before he made twenty two million. Now, Doug made a comment that he heard that they were going to start uh, reducing that, like with kids, like uh, the way they monetize yeah. it. Uh, well, so, I heard something similar too. Does okay, he so, just get like really excited when he open? Like, what the fuck? It's just kids love watching it. So here's uh, so here's yay. the thing we have to. I, I don't think the twenty nine twenty six million is from YouTube ads. I think some of it's from YouTube ads. Ads. I think he's getting paid by these toy companies. Oh yeah, to open them up and to display them. That's probably where he's making most of his yeah, money. Yeah, definitely. Because YouTube ads don't. People think they pay. I don't uh, think YouTube tons pays of money. Barely anything. No, yeah. they don't make. Yeah. Don't, that's not where yeah. they're making their money. I, I, that's one of the things I always talk about when I get interviewed. It's like people don't realize that YouTube is a loss for us. Like, oh, it, it's, it's hilarious. It costs us more, more there. money to put a YouTube video up than what we get paid. And no, you ain't gonna make shit three, off. That's with three hundred and what three hundred fifty thousand subscribers we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People have no idea how terrible that. Now that being said, uh, you, some, you can use it as a platform. Well, to, part of the algorithm too is like watch time and everything, and so you do get more money for somebody who's like creates like vlogs, like Casey Neistat or someone who you're watching, right? Yeah. You know, 12, 15, 20 minutes of them versus like an instructional video like ours are, which are typically shorter. Right. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just baffled by that because even my kids watch this this guy that just plays video games and then like it makes it entertaining. Like he's a little bubble of him. Talking with his stupid purple hair. Just, oh yeah, my he, my son used to watch him. He, yeah, that, you know, yeah, that's you know what, I'm talking about. Uh, what what platform is that, Andrew? Do you know the name of that? What what is that where the kids play video games and they get paid? Twitch. Yes, yes. And they uh, make a lot of money. No, Twitch, I have dude, I yeah. have I have a nephew. I told my son, I'm like, listen, who just started making money doing it. Did he? Yeah, for Christmas. They he, would rather he, watch that than anything on TV. He asked for all the all the gear, so the headphones and the camera and everything on him, and he was kind of explaining it to me, and I I, I don't want to get into it too much because i know i'll mess it up but it, it's it he after a certain amount of people are watching him he automatically starts to get paid mm -hmm. yeah and so and it's very similar to the the youtube model where you've got enough views and and watching you for long enough i had time. this talk with my son i'm like listen you like video games let's start making money <laughs> start monetizing i'm serious that. i'm like listen you don't know look at you you need a promoter yeah. you don't want to go out there now the, the well your, you got to be entertaining though too on the it. mic that's the, it it's uh, or just badass it's one or the other or like one really of the other good, or yeah. both is what makes you like sure. famous right sure. if you are an entertaining kid and you're also badass at whatever game you're playing yeah. that's where you, you know how, i can't take away from this kid he does do a great job yeah. of like narrating everything he's doing the whole time like what a pain in the ass job that's got like it seems awesome like oh i'm in my house i'm sitting and playing video games all day but think about doing that every day like he doesn't stop bro these the, the top players i talked to my son about this he says the top uh video game players of the world practice on average about 12 hours a day yeah every day yeah so it's not like it's easy yeah. or whatever yeah. that's that's hard yeah. No, I remember when we had uh, what was his name when we had him on the show. That was friends of uh, Mark Mastroff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name yeah, right now. Yeah, I mean, he's talking about but the I Super mean, League and I, all that. It's obviously. I mean, we we keep talking about it. We haven't done anything about it, but no no doubt in my mind that 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 will be a growing market. Will be the people that are taking care of their health. Yeah, because they're sitting and staring at a screen all day They'll long. They'll have the advantage. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So if you're in the fitness space and you want a niche market that I think is going to explode, uh, that would be catering to these people, catering to the exercises they should be doing, yeah. the taking care of them. None of them are wearing blue blockers. None of that. Yeah, no. I think I really, if you're if you're staring at a screen for twelve hours a day, yeah, and it's I like foresee kind of crazy. I foresee the pre workout uh, market start to t dominate because you feel it it's stimulating makes you wired or whatever yeah. so i foresee like a pre-game drink of some sort they blowing up. That, yeah. they do have some of them but they're crap i looked at them yeah, i thought crap. about this myself yeah. so if you're a supplement company and you're listening might be a good market for you to take your pre-workout and rebrand it gamers fuel they or don't whatever. they don't have i would think that's already they, have, they do they but, they're not, it, bro, but they're not but they're not no yeah, they, major you know, they drink, yeah they drink mountain dew and they drink like rock stars and stuff like that but like if you made one with like choline in it and, right. like, and all these nootropics, nootropics and yeah. really strong amount 100%. of caffeine you know maybe some beta alanine so they feel a little tingle or whatever yeah you're probably you probably do well hmm first question is from jeremy Longprey. Do you guys recommend deload weeks in between phases of your programs? If so, how often and what would you re recommend they look like? Okay, so specifically in regards to our programs. We get this a lot. Yeah, no. Not unless you think you need one, 
But the way we designed our programs was you just yeah. you we just, thought ahead of this. Yeah, you follow it through. In fact, if you follow our if you follow multiple programs, because the, here's the ideal way, right? So let's say you're you've been listening to Mind Pump for a while. And you're very, very serious about your fitness. You very, very trust st- we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, okay, I think these guys know what they're talking about. I'm very serious about, you know, whatever my goal is, building muscle, burning body fat. Um, I want to I do like a six-month run or nine months or a year or whatever of uh, following their programs. You follow the programs back to back, and they're essentially designed to be able to be run that way. Now, the way you would do a deload week would be based off of feel. Well, first of all, you should, I, since you just said that, and I get this question all the time, you should at, you should explain to people what that order looks like. For oh us. well, you, unless you've been with us since day one, you don't you don't probably know what that order. For is. For most people listening, uh, you, you know, generally speaking, a, a great way to go through the programs would be Maps Anabolic. Um, then you would go Maps Performance. Then you would go Maps Aesthetic. Then, if you want to go more the bodybuilding route, you could do Maps Split. If you want to go more you know, strength. functional strength type of stuff. You can go maps strong. If you want to do more powerlifting, then you can go maps power lift from this. And if you really want to, you know, maintain mobility and stuff throughout the whole process using something like maps prime. But they've all been really designed. Like we started with like the core of what, no matter what your your goal is, the th- core three is kind of like the idea of like, and a maps anabolic, maps performance, maps aesthetic. Right, and then yeah. from there you can kind of take more specific paths. Right, am I more like you said, body bodybuilder ish, more strongman ish? Yes. Am I more powerlifting ish? And kind of going that direction, yeah. but and you won't you won't need you you pro, if you're healthy, your nutrition's good, you're doing everything right, you're following the programs as they're laid out. You're not going to need to do deload weeks. Um, but if uh, if your body's not feeling good, if you're feeling run down. Then a deload week can actually be uh, quite um, quite advantageous. It can actually benefit you quite a bit. I think people now, if you're a hard, if you're like a really high level athlete, then the deload week can get very technical. But for most people, a deload week can be literally just you know this week I'm going to go in the gym. I'm going to go 50 percent intensity. Just yeah. go super easy. That's it. Yeah. It could be that simple. Right, or right. Or this week, I'm not going to go to the gym, and all I'm going to do is mobility, is or something. mobility and correctional exercise. Like that would be a great way to do it. Because I think some, you know, and this probably is from the I would say the powerlifting world. They tend to be at really technical with their deloads. Yeah, but they're dealing with like high level. Well, they're athletes. also the most likely to need a deload week right. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of all the most intense of all of all the lifting um, that I've done, when I train most like a powerlifter is when I flirt with. Uh, needing the deload week more than anything else because you're just you're lifting a heavy heavy load. There's a lot. Of, yeah, you feel it in the joints. Yeah, stress on the joint, and that's kind of if you're not following any maps programs and you're wanting to know this answer, it it's a it's a definitely it depends. It really depends on the programming or how how intense you've been training. And normally, you know, like if you and signs of that uh, fatigue. Uh, you'll see strength decrease. You know, you'll be like, "Oh my God, last week I was benching X, and now I'm only benching this." So if you're uh, decreasing in strength or achy joints, yeah. major stiffness and achy joints, those three are like the major indicators that uh, there's a good chance you could benefit from you know deloading for a week. And that deload week could be as basic as Sal's thing, where you just back off 50% of the load. 50% of the what you would be doing will reduce the intensity, probably let you recover, or if it's really bad, uh, you wouldn't hurt from doing all mobility type yeah, And the, I remember the first time learning of the value of a deload week. You know, I was I was uh, in my late teens and my family had planned a, a big family vacation. And up at this point, I'd been working out consistently for at least a few years. And I was very obsessed with working out. <laughs> Never missed a workout. Definitely overdoing it more often than not. And we went on this vacation, and I did not have access to a gym. Right. And so it was a week. And so what I did during that week is I, you know, I tried doing some push-ups here and there and some pull-ups wherever I could, but I basically didn't work out. Um, and I remember going back to the gym on the week back when we came back to, and you were stronger. And I went, I walked in, worked out, and I was, I was lifting more. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, this is crazy. I for sure I thought I'd get weaker because I didn't work out for a whole week. And that's when I started to really realize, like, okay, if I'm not allowing my body the, 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 the right amount of time to rest and recover, then it's not going to build. It just won't. And and that's when I started to figure out, okay, this is something that might be Sometimes, hard. too, a, a deload doesn't need to be a deload week either. Sometimes it's just a few days. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I and, – and this is probably something that I – more commonly happens with me is, you know – 
I do a I do back to back workouts where I kind of overreached and I and I knew I shouldn't have. I still did it anyways. And then yeah, then my body goes, Yep, you did. Mm. And then that to me is like, okay, I'm just gonna pull back for the next two or three days. Mm. And instead of staying on this pro this uh, this track of you know, training this intense, I'm going to back off the intensity for a few days or again, focus all on mobility for a few days. So it doesn't always have to be an entire week either. It's just, it's a great thing for you to learn to do is to read and listen to the signals your body's trying to give you when you are over training and overreaching. And nobody knows better than you if you're this type of person. Like uh, we openly admit that uh, even as trainers and knowing better, uh, it's very common that we still overreach all the time, mm -hmm. still do that, even though we know better. And so when, you know, and when I do this, I know that I got to back off and deload a little bit. If you're that person, then uh, then you got to pay attention to those signs. You could also be the other side, which, you know, that I'm careful. All you, all you need is an excuse to not. Work. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so that I'm very that's why this is a definitely a depends question, because I also used to have clients that were, was looking for any excuse to not train. I think it's a lot less common that you need a deload. Week. I would agree. You know what I'm saying? Unless yeah. you're in the space, like yeah, if you're you've been doing it forever and you've been. Like, yeah, you Super love, you love if you system. love working yeah. out and you've been training consistently for a long time or you're in the fitness space uh you more likely are the people that are probably overreaching and could get a lot of yeah. benefit but, from deloading. but i would say for most people listening if you follow our programs and you follow them one after another yeah, you shouldn't yeah. you're, you'll, we, you'll be all right we design them to be able to be run uh concurrently in that way and, and in fact we design them to get progressively more effective in terms of your body's progress. So what you'll find is as you're following the programs, as you move to the next one and then move to the next one, your body's going to continue to make no, know, that's faster. A, that's a great point. This is, and they, that's why we recommend an order because if let's say you were a brand new beginner and you've never lifted before and you decide to buy MAPS PED, there's a good chance you might need a deload after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm nice. saying? Because that is you're way overreaching for somebody who is just getting started and you shouldn't go into a program that's that intense, that much volume. And that's the reason why we tell everybody they should go red, green, and then black in that order is because it progressively starts to build the volume up. Mm. Then from there, all the ones that have a much higher volume, you should have adapted to the more and more volume through the course of those three programs that you can uh, yeah. you can handle we, taking on one of the We other actually programs. put those three programs in a bundle where we discounted them significantly. It's called the RGB bundle, red, green, black. That, that refers to the color of the programs because MAPS Anabolic's red, MAPS Performance is green, and then MAPS Aesthetic is black. Next question is from Mo Daywood. What are your thoughts on mini bulks and mini cuts? I, I think I think we were the first people to talk about. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> love it. I feel like we came up. With that I love that we're getting questions on things that we I feel like introduced uh, or you know to the space or at least talked about them in this way. So. Mini bulk and, and I'm sure. Okay, careful. I'm sure somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. No one's always, saying. Always I'm not going to claim we invented anything no. because yeah. there's fucking somebody did this before us. It's like sure. It's not that at all. It's, sure. It's, but I there wasn't a lot of people talking about uh, this the traditional way in this in our space to bulk and to cut is. You have winter time and you bulk. You put on all whatever weight and you add calories like crazy and it's and you focus on bulking for months at a time. Mm -hmm. And then the cut is, you know, months also getting ready for that. And it's just, you know, when you think about uh the the most effective way to do things, this is not the most effective way to well, do, it, although we've been doing it for years. Well, like when you're lifting weights and you're doing it properly and you're eating in a excess of calories so that you can build. Initially, in that process, a lot of those calories goes to muscle. But the, the longer you stay in a calorie surplus, especially if it's a big surplus, the less of those calories go to muscle and the more of it go to body fat. Okay. Now, when you're cutting, that meaning you're eating less calories than you're burning and you're training in a way to burn body fat, initially, a lot of the weight loss that you start to see besides water starts to become is body fat. But if you stick to that for a long time, your body starts to try to adapt by sometimes reducing muscle mass. And so this is why you'll find people on long diets who, who lose 10 pounds or 15 pounds and find that half or more of the weight that they lost uh, went to muscle. So one of the ways that you can kind of maximize the benefits and the effects of, of bulking and cutting and minimize the potential negatives of bulking and cutting is to do it for a shorter period of time. So a mini bulk is like three weeks long, three, four weeks. So for three, four weeks, I'm eating in a surplus and I'm lifting weights to build muscle. A mini cut, same thing, three to four weeks. I'm eating in a deficit um, and I'm training in a way to, to to burn body fat or to preserve muscle. 
Now, what if you just want to cut? What if you're like, I want to cut a lot. Like, what do I do after the short cut? Here's what you do. Let's say you did your mini cut and it was four weeks long. After that four week period, do a week or two of maybe maintenance calories or maybe a slight, a very, very small surplus for a week, a week or two max. Then go back on the cut. So it would look like a four, four week on, one week off, four week on, two week off type of a, a schedule. And what you'll find when you do this is you minimize those negative effects. You minimize the metabolic adaptation, the muscle loss, you maximize the fat burning, or in the case of bulking, it's more lean mass and not just you know, dirty weight. It's very similar to the training volume philosophy that we Ooh, have. Dirty weight. You're, you're doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. You're applying that nutritionally here. Right. I mean, does that mean you can't cut for six weeks or eight weeks? Of course not. You could absolutely do that. Yeah. But to, to maximize it, we want to do as little as we possibly can to elicit the most amount of change. And you, you got to understand that your body, just like it adapts to exercise, it gets adapted to whatever you're consuming and eating on a regular basis. So, you know, running in a surplus for a little while and then changing it up is one of the best things that you can do. And what we're trying to do is, and this is where the individual variance is, is, you know, is the is the peak time for that person two weeks or four weeks or is it five weeks or three weeks? I don't, you know, I don't know. That depends on each person individually. It's going to fall somewhere though, between like the two and six week range. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be ideal. Once after that, the results are, and if you're a competitor or if you've ever competed, you know this. This is the one of the number one mistakes I saw people competing is they would go on these like 12 week cuts and boy, they were miserable for like the last four to five weeks. And the reason why they were miserable is because their body had adapted to that low calorie intake and that excessive amount of our, uh, cardio so well that they were starting to see very minimal change. And they had to cut real low at that point. Yes. Yeah. And so it just gets so extreme where, again, yeah. you want to... And, and psychologically speaking, um, I think it's better too. Oh, yeah, Staying bulk. on a bulk constantly or a cut constantly... Um, it starts to get tiresome. It starts to get really, really difficult. Um, it, you know, breaking it up with a week of, you know, going in maybe slightly the opposite direction, besides being probably good for you physiologically, is good for you psychologically. So you don't end up, you know, 12 weeks in a cut and then you come out of it and you're like, I'm free. Mm -hmm. And then you binge in the opposite direction. Next question is from T. Evans 2208. Are there any benefits to carb cycling or can it cause a bad relationship with food? Uh, it, it, okay. It can cause a bad relationship with food if it turns into restrict binge. So if carb cycling for you looks like no carbs and then all the carbs, all the carbs at once. Uh, then that's a problem. Other than that, here's the benefits of carb cycling that I have found personally. I don't think it's going to accelerate or maximize fat loss. I don't think there's any evidence to, to, to show that that is su it's superior cycle than to just have lower carb or just go higher carb. I think the benefits are psychological. I really do. I think uh, for a lot of people, reducing carbs is a great way to eat a lower calorie diet. Proteins and fats tend to be more satiating, but if, if you've ever gone on a low carb diet for a long time, you know how your workouts start to suffer. You don't get good pumps. Is basing... Uh carbohydrates like like adding that to when you're most active is that part of carb cycling or is that called something else that is that is a type of carb cycling okay yeah where it's like targeted carbohydrate intake where, exactly for, um, for athletic purposes like that's kind of where i would see you know some benefit in terms of how you utilize like accessible fuel like have carbs obviously being superior there well first of all any diet can cause a bad relationship with food I don't care what diet it is. Right. So that that's a tough one to to answer, right? Like it, it could, yeah, absolutely, it could, it could for anyway. I I love carb cycling. I use it um, quite often. Uh, I love to teach it uh, to people, and I and I probably agree with you, Sal. Like it, it's probably because of the psychological benefits. Mm -hmm. I just I think uh, it kind of mirrors uh, our natural our natural tendencies of eating, and we don't even realize it. Yeah. Like if you were to take a snapshot of how somebody eats for three weeks consistently that wasn't tracking, but you could track for them and see, you would see they kind of have this natural ebb and flow probably of carbon. You're just managing it and controlling it right. and sticking to to boundaries around that, where I think what a lot of people naturally do is they, they, they stay in this kind of low to moderate and then they do a bunch of activity or they go a long period without eating and everything gets depleted and then they get really hungry, they get the cravings mm -hmm. and then they overdo it like crazy and then they come back down moderately. And so I think we kind of naturally do this anyways, 
Uh, but doing carb cycling correctly, you're obviously figuring out your macros and what a high day, a medium day, and a low day would look like you, and then you and you cycle. And we should explain that, right? So there's probably a lot of people listening going like, what the fuck does carb cycling mean? It just it basically means that you're going through periods of lower carbohydrate intake and moderate to higher carbohydrate intake for a specified period of time. And I want I want people to know too because i get this question a lot um like how you do that as far as you know how many days high low and it, what's the cycle look like i've actually played around with this and and done it uh, multiple ways and my advice is whatever you'll stick to right like um i i personally used to like to have two really really low days a moderate day and then a really high day and, and then I, repeat yeah and then repeat um I, i've done it all kinds of ways though where i do a low a medium a high and it's a three-day cycle and you repeat mm -hmm. it, it's really uh, and and what i would do is just what felt best with me what uh, how my workouts were going when i was running that way with that, that low of carbohydrates versus allowing a moderate and a high day and only running it three days like you know play with these things there's there are no rules you just got to figure out how many total calories first your body needs, then how many total gra uh, 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 grams of protein it needs. So that's where you start. And then you look at your your fats and carbohydrates for the rest of the makeup of where your calories need to be and divide that. And we talk all the time about, you know, what what exactly should that percentage? I like to split my, my carbs and my fat. I like to be a very even balance where- You mean calorie-wise? Yeah, calorie-wise, yeah, right? Not gram per gram. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Not gram for gram, gram for gram. But if you look at, I've got, after I look at my protein intake, let's say for argument's sake, I've got 2,000 calories left to spend. I'd like to get about 1,000 of that from fat, 1,000 of that from carbohydrates, mm -hmm. figure out how many grams that equals, and then divide that over three days and cycle them that way. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to lean out- so that's about 100 grams of, that'd be like 90 grams of fat, 150 grams of carbs or something like right. that. And that was just a random yeah, number. Yeah, it's yeah. not a real number. Just so people, my... you know, get an idea. Of how yeah, yeah. Down. But I mean, so then, and then from there, you you run one day where you're, you know, that would be your, what your body needs, right? Mm -hmm. So a surplus would be a little bit over that. Uh, I would consider a moderate day kind of hitting hitting your maintenance and then a, a, a low day uh, being, you know, maybe 50% less of carbohydrates. Yeah, and the, the way I would like to do it in the past was kind of what Justin was talking about where it's more targeted. So I would have some carbs around my workouts and then on my higher carb days, I would throw in an additional carbohydrate meal so I've later done, in the night. I've done the something, I, I love to do this, which is similar to that. Justin's thinking performance uh, wise. I used to think uh, like what I was focusing on, like a, when I was competing. Mm. So I would always keep my either moderate or high days around the, the muscle groups that I really want to grow and build. Yeah. Right? So, oh, interesting. Yeah. so you have the energy to pump. Yeah, the, the yeah. energy to pump and I have the refeed of all the all those nutrients and it just it felt good to have my moderate to high days around the muscle groups that I'm trying to develop and really push and stretch sure. myself. That makes sense. And then muscle groups that are like my arms, a strength of mine that I don't I could skip and be okay with. I would and, and when you because we know when you're on really low carb, sometimes you just don't have the oomph to train. And so I would pick the days that I would be training, you know, muscle groups that are not a weakness of mine. And then that I wouldn't care if I was, didn't have the intensity or the ability to push in those training sessions. Next question is from delicious and nutritious. <laughs> Does foam rolling actually work? What's the science behind it? Is it better to have a hard or a soft foam roller? I, li I like this question because go hard. Um, as trainers for many years, I think uh, I I know I explained this incorrectly. We explained it incorrectly when we started the pump, mind pump. Yeah, yeah, early on. Remember, we talked about foam rolling as uh, myofascial release. Well, it was explained. It. Yeah, it was explained. Uh, you know, wrong to us to begin with. So yeah, yeah, foam foam rolling uh, is not m releasing the fascia as as a lot of us thought. It wasn't. It's not you know breaking down you know knots and tissue and adhesions. Like a lot of us thought, it's probably not what's happening, um, but it does have some value. It really does. It's not going to fix a problem, but foam rolling allows you to move in ways that allow you to fix the problem. This is where the value is. So let's say you're, you're, you have issues getting into a good, proper squat because your knees hurt and your hips feel sore. So you foam roll for 15 minutes beforehand. Now you can get into a proper squat. So does that mean the foam roller fixed you? No. It, it, it allowed you to get into that proper squat to train in a way now. Right. It gives you a temporary relief. Yes. Yeah. It's very temporary. And, and if you don't fix the root cause of the of your pain or your mobility issues, you'll have to foam roll every single time you work out. And over time, 
you'll can you'll start to get worse if you don't correct those problems. Now, correct me if this is kind of how I explain it in layman's. Like, what happens to us when we when we get these you know quote unquote knots or tightness feeling is. This is your your CNS overactive. It's a protective mechanism. And if you think that every time you move a muscle or you activate a muscle, all these these neurons from your brain are fired there, and let's just say for argument's sake, it's a hundred of those get fired there. When it's super overactive, instead of firing a hundred there, it's firing five hundred there, and so it's just it's getting over overworked and it gets tense and tight because of that. And it's more CNS related than it is something going on with our fascia or our muscle. It's just overly mm -hmm. stressed. And then when we roll like that, you get just like when you get a nice, good deep tissue massage, it relaxes that and releases yeah. it. It sort of dampens the signal. I think that, I mean, the the pain signal is beneficial to identify potential problems. And I think that, like, we forget the fact that pain is, it, you know, that's feedback. That's that's something to pay attention to. And, you know, for, for you to, like, now foam roll and apply pressure in that area to be able to kind of, um, you know, maybe damper down that signal. So now it can allow for you to keep on like thinking that, you know, you're supported in that area and everything can, uh, you know, function properly. That helps to kind of then promote these better patterns to occur as a result of that. But I think it is, it's just, it's just a way to kind of uh, release a lot of the 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 immediate tension in the the alarm system, if you will, of like, hey, something's wrong here, and we need to like really like yeah. tighten up I mean, and protect. I still there's still a ton of value to it. Oh, I, I still use foam rollers here and there. Yeah. Um, I, I I like them exactly for what we're how we're explaining them. I mean, what, what we know is when you apply pressure to a part of your body, there are uh, localized, you know, natural anesthesia anesthetics that get released. There's natural you know, chemicals that are released in that area that kind of start to alleviate pain. So that's number one. But number two, here's the big thing that's happening. So if you've ever had a muscle cramp, you ever woke up in the middle of the night where your calf is real tight, oh, yeah. you instinctually push on it. You instinctively try to smash on it with your hand or stretch it out. And the reason why you're doing that instinctually is because when you're pressing on a muscle, your brain receives a signal that'll say, relax, relax that area, relax that muscle. Um, and, and so that's what ends up happening. It helps calm it down. When you have tight muscles, those muscles are tight because they're probably tight because they feel like they need to protect you because of poor movement patterns. Well, and using that example, let's say somebody you cramped up all the time because you have some sort of a nutritional deficiency. Sure. You, you, you putting that pressure on for release, you're not fixing it because you're not addressing the root cause. Right. So you'd have to you're, dive you're into that. it. So the yeah. same thing goes with mobility, right? If you are, goes with this, you know, let's say you have, you know, IT real common, right? So it causes either knee pain or hip pain. Normally for people, they roll it, they feel relief from it. The foam roll is not fixing it. It's giving you temporary relief. So then you can go into doing the either strength training exercises that are necessary or the mobility work that is necessary yeah. to help work towards it. If you don't do that and you just foam roll to relieve it and then you go about your movements kind of the same way you always have, you're just going to keep having to do that yeah. all the time. Which, it was it yeah. wasn't until we got into mobility training did I was I able to eliminate using the foam roll. Like I went from the guy who used to foam roll for 15, sometimes 20 minutes before a good strength training session because I, I felt it was necessary for, to get me relieved enough just so I could go after, get after a good lift to someone who doesn't have to do it at all anymore. But that's be also because I've implemented mobility into mobility work days into my training now, mm -hmm. and now I don't have to do anything. Well, more. yeah, it, it tripped me out even just going through FRC and things where we're just focused more on the isometric part of that, like not even necessarily movement, but more just like the squeeze and the tension that that actually has that same effect of like localized pressure. But now, you know, me just squeezing and connecting more to the muscle actually alleviated a lot of the pain almost instantaneously. Right. Yeah. It's no, it's not that different from getting deep tissue massage. Although a, a good massage therapist, obviously, is going to be you know targeted and individualized and, and far more effective, but it's not that different. The same kind of relief that you'll get from deep tissue massage is very similar to what you'll get from a foam roller. But even with like same thing, like let's say you have pain and so you go see a massage therapist and when you're done, oh my god, it feels so much better. You're probably going to have to keep going if you don't solve the reason why you're getting tight like that yeah. in the first place. And so that's what, so foam rolling is a very 
it's, valuable tool, but it is not a solution. Yeah. It's part of a solution. I look at it as almost like active versus like passive therapy. So this is like probably one of your passive, even though you're the one instituting it, it's more passive than actively controlling it. I would agree. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. We have guides on fat loss, muscle building, building your arms, getting a better squat. I have a testosterone guide for those of you that want to raise your testosterone so it kind of breaks down ways you can do this naturally just go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of those they cost nothing you can also find the three of us on instagram you can find justin at mindpumpjustin you can find me at mindpumpsal and adam at mindpumpadam